This video is going to be about a cyanide meter that I picked up at a ham fest not too long ago. It's a Cyanadder 3 made by Helper Instruments, which I believe is out of business now. And these were quite popular um, working on FM 2 way radios. Not as uh, useful now with uh, service monitors and that, but they're, they're still nice units. This one's been modified. It has a telephone jack on the top. Here, with an RJ11 jack on it. And it's got a switch here. Which I can't quite make. Well, let's see. Down says bypass and up says... I can't really read it. Something AM. You know, this might have been used to test um, for noise on uh, phone lines for radio station, I'm wondering, since it has an RJ11 jack on it. I'm going to undo the modifications here and get it back to um, stock and then go from there. I don't know if it works. I haven't even plugged it in yet. This has been sitting on the to-do pile. So I guess next I'll open it up and take a look inside. That comes next. Here is a view with the covers off here. This is the bottom of the board, which is actually the top of the meter. But anyway, here um, are the two leads that went to the phone jack on the top, red and green. I just cut them off because this is going to be removed anyway. I'm going to redraw where these were before I remove them. Here's a view inside showing a circuit board that looks like it was homemade on some perf board. Looks like it's got a transistor and some some caps and a, an adjustment. It looks like a filter, I'm thinking. The way it's set up, I don't know until I redraw it. And then it's tapped in here on the cyanide meter here, which is S1 on the schematic. Here's a better view of the circuit board. The ICs are all in sockets. And now for the good news. I found a manual on the internet. It's got schematics. And a board layout so with these two I should be able to fix it it doesn't have any non-standard components on it either so it should be a fairly easy repair so I'm going to undo the mod and try to get it back to where it was originally and then we'll power it up and see if it works and then run a few tests on it and that will be next here is the add-on circuit board that modified this unit just made on a perf board. Here's a DPDT switch that switched this in and out of the circuit. Here's how it was wired. Here's the add on circuit. I'll put the thing here for reference here. The black wire was connected to this ground. The junction of C2 and C3, which would have been the ground for the the op amps, the midpoint. There's a there's a chassis ground, and then there's a, I guess you could call it a virtual ground, that is done with these dividers here. There's better ways to do it, but this is how they did it. it. Provides plus and minus voltages for the the op amps. The switch switch this add-on circuit in and out what they did was they broke the circuit here where the input comes in and they put this point and this point across the center of the switch in this position shown here it just connected the input on through the unit in this position down here it connected the add-on circuit into the unit and I believe this is just some type of filter there's four 0 0.1 microfarad polycaps in here 
and there's a pot for adjustment here. Here's where the RJ11 jack was connected. The green was connected on the input lead and then the red lead was just grounded to the chassis which is right here. This gray cable here is where the external speaker in the radio being tested is connected. They had broken the connection here, the red lead, and then here's the two red leads that ran over to that, that circuit here. This is where it was broken, so I removed that. They also had a ground here that I removed. The black lead on the add-on circuit was connected to the positive terminal of C3, which is right here. The op amp needs two voltages, a positive and negative voltage, so they did that here by coming out of the regulator, a 78L08 I believe it is, kind of hard to see, this is a drawing, it's not that easy to read here, it's a little smudged. But anyway, they came out of the 8 volt regulator and they've got a capacitive divider and a resistive divider it looks like. And the midpoint of here they connected here which would be the uh, circuit ground which you can see throughout here this is a symbol for that and then the negative lead to the op amps goes to this ground symbol here well I've removed all the modifications in the unit here I've cleaned all the switches and I'm gonna power it up and we'll see what we get uh, right now I've connected a 10 volt sine wave, 1 kilohertz, which is 3.5 RMS. And now I'll hit the switch, see what we get. Well, it's off a little bit. 3.3 versus 3.5. That's pretty close. I can probably touch that up a little bit. I'm feeding a 1 kilohertz signal in to the input of the unit and I'm measuring R7. I'm measuring the output here at this point. And this should remain 2 volts peak to peak as I vary the input. Here's the level here 2.1 volts peak to peak and I'm going to slowly run the amplitude up and as I run it up the amplitude shouldn't vary much. Here I'm at 2 volts Three volts, four volts. So the AGC circuit seems to be working all right. We're still at 2.1 volts peak to peak. And that's measuring across, well, basically pin one of pin one of U2. I'm on the, this end of this resistor here. I'm going to measure the output of the 1 kilohertz generator here, measured here at the BNC front panel here. I got the scope hooked up and I'll run the amplitude up. Seems to work all right. Here's an all realistic HTX 404 UHF handy talkie. And right now I have in the service monitor dialed in 445.750 megahertz, 1 kilohertz audio modulating to 3 kilohertz, which is what they require here. 
I have the speaker output connected to the Synad meter, Synadder, and I have the output of the generator connected to the antenna input. Now I'm going to turn on the, the RF. I'm going to bring the amplitude up here and we're going to shoot for 12 dB Synad. That's 0.178 microvolts. That's about 0.2 microvolts. So this is pretty old radio. It might need a little help, but uh, you can turn the volume up here if you want to listen. And as I bring the amplitude up, of course it quiets more. Here's 1.58 microvolts. Here's 2 microvolts. I'm going to run it back down. You can see the... I'll run it back up here. I'll run it back down now. As I lower the output of the generator, you'll see the noise start to come up. about 0.2 microvolts anyway it looks like the the meters working here um, I didn't do any more I was gonna check some of the caps in there but everything seemed to be alright I didn't I should have probably measured the uh, the output ripple on the uh, power supply but it, I think it's alright so the voltmeter works, the Synad meter works, and it outputs one kilohertz signal, so I'm thinking this thing is uh, good to go here. Uh, probably won't use it too much, though, because this thing does everything. Testing here, I can go one button, receive test, one button, transmit test. If you want to download the manual, if you can get one of these. I got this at a ham fest with a bunch of other junk here. So these aren't quite as useful as they used to be. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll take a brief look at the schematic and then uh, that'll be it for this one. Stand by. Here's a schematic diagram of the Cyanator 3. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. That's all available on the internet. You can look it up. Anyway, on the left here you see test lead. That's the gray cable with the two alligator clips on it. That connects to the speaker out of your receiver that you're testing. And when you have it in, in the Synad position, the switch, that signal is fed up to the first op amp here, U2. And this amplifies the incoming signal. Now you set your generator to the frequency of your receiver and then you modulate the signal, frequency modulate it with a one kilohertz signal um, and you modulate it to three kilohertz deviation and then that's applied into U2 which amplifies it. Now this is a feedback system here um, the output here on pin 1 is also fed through U2, the second uh, op amp in the, on the chip here. And then that feeds back through this feedback loop here and controls the gain of U2 by pulling the uh, amplitude up and down depending on the, uh, the level. And it does that to maintain a 2 volt peak to peak signal at the AGC output line here. Now, now this at this point you've got your your noise distortion and your one kilohertz signal that's demodulated from your receiver and then that's comes over here and in the Synad position the signals coupled into this second or third op amp U2 and that's a filter that filters out the one kilohertz uh, signal from the audio signal. 
So at the output here, you, all you have is the noise and distortion products, the output of the receiver here. And then that's applied to U3 here. This is a detector circuit that detects the signal and then it's fed to the meter which is calibrated in Synad. You can also use this as an AC voltmeter. In that position, the signal is applied through this cap to this string of voltage divider string here, this string of resistors, and th these are your your multipliers for your uh, voltmeter. And then they're applied to U4. This is a CA3130 or a 3A3130, and that's amplified. Anyway, in the voltmeter position, S2A is in the lower position here, so that signal is fed up, it's rectified, and drives the meter. This section over here generates the one kilohertz tone that you can use um, for testing purposes. They use U6 and U7 here and that's output onto the BNC connector on the front panel here. Of course this is the power supply, you got a transformer bridge and then U1, the output split here, you've got uh, shows two grounds, you've got the chassis ground here and then the signal ground here so the the plus and minus for the op amps are between plus and minus and then the signal, this is the common here. If you look up here you've got your positive and negative voltages for the op amps which uh, drives all of them. One thing I found interesting is Q2 here on my unit this shows an SK3628 I believe it is and looking that up on a data sheet that's a power MOSFET but in my unit it has two small JFETs in parallel in this position here so there must have been some changes I don't know why they put that in there but uh, some of these things were produced for a long time so there are obviously uh, production changes. It's a brief description of the schematic of the circuitry of the Sinator 3. Anyway that's it for this one thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.